The hockey mask wearing machete toting Jason Voorhees has terrorized unsuspecting teens since Friday the 13th hit screens in 1980. The franchise has produced 12 movies, a TV show, a series of comics, and a few brutal video games. But audiences still want more. Take a look behind the mask to see how he became one of the most recognizable movie monsters of all time. Here's the untold truth of Friday the 13th. Save the date. Following his work on Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left, director-producer Sean Cunningham sought to capitalize on the growing slasher movie trend. In a pretty brilliant marketing move, Cunningham took out an ad promoting the film before he had any financial backing. He called the unscripted film Friday the 13th, mimicking the date-specific theme set by the Halloween series. The strategy worked, and as word spread of what the ads called the most terrifying movie ever made, investors actually started reaching out to him. He found himself with a budget for a film with a title, but no plot or characters. So, why Friday the 13th? Jason was my son, and today is his birthday. Joshua Voorhees? Miller originally wrote the character of Jason Voorhees as Josh, but changed it to avoid giving him the same name as his own son, Joshua. And because really, Josh Takes Manhattan probably wouldn't have quite the same ring to it. At the time, the character's name had little significance. He wasn't even written to appear in the film until later drafts, and even then, only in his mother's dream sequences. Masked Murderer Jason didn't take his iconic masked form until Friday the 13th Part 3. While the original character was created by screenwriter Victor Miller and director Sean S. Cunningham, the hockey mask was a contribution from Part 3 director Steve Miner to replace Jason's usual burlap sack. Steve had done a whole bunch of, uh, of hockey documentaries, uh, you know, like, and right. <laughs> when, he was, uh, when he was learning the editing craft, and I think that just out of that, he said, well, let's at least try this. And, and it, that was the choice for Friday 3, and it just stuck. The mask worn by Jason in Part 3 was replicated from a Detroit Red Wings Goldie mask, and variations appeared throughout the rest of the series. Miner's suggestion of the hockey mask secured Jason as an iconic figure, making him the master of terror that we know today. Camp Crystal Lake Camp Nobi Bosco, or the North Bergen Boy Scouts Camp, has been operational since 1927, but you might know it better as Camp Crystal Lake. The New Jersey summer camp runs regular day tours of the grounds to satisfy the curiosities of horror fans. But Nobi Bosco is otherwise reserved exclusively for Boy Scout activities. According to the official site, the $100 tickets sell out quickly, but they're good for a five-hour guided tour of all the key massacre locations. If you can't make it out to Jason's bloodstained stomping grounds, you can buy a chunk of the original camp Crystal Lake Dock, a slice of log cabin, or a bottle of water from the lake, in which young Jason famously drowned. Kill her, mommy! Friday the 13th's signature sound cue is actually the voice of composer Harry Manfredini. Cunningham approached Manfredini to create a musical cue that would characterize the presence of the unseen killer. Manfredini took a cue from the film itself. When Jason's mother utters those terrifying words, Manfredini repeated the words, applied a heavy reverb to his voice, and the result became iconic. The effect that was initially created to foreshadow Mrs. Voorhees would cue the presence of Jason in all the new films to follow. A new car after failing to cast Shelley Winters for the role of Mrs. Voorhees, the production team sought out veteran television actress Betsy Palmer, who initially turned it down upon reading the script, which she thought was awful. Palmer eventually caved and took the role because she desperately needed a new car. And truly, I only did the darn thing to, to buy a car. I really did. At the end of filming, she could afford a Volkswagen Scirocco. She changed her mind after production began when effects artist Tom Savini showed her some pictures of his effects work. When a picture of the effects for the young deformed Jay Jason came up, he told her, that's your son. From that point on, Palmer gained sympathy for Pamela Voorhees and delivered a performance that would become a milestone of her career. <laughs> Best Body Count Jason's kills have been tallied at numbers ranging between 158 and 300, but it's still unanimous that Jason is responsible for more on-screen fatalities than any of his horror villain contemporaries. The wide margin of error is attributed to Mrs. Voorhees being the original killer, a grief-sick father emulating Jason in Part 5, and because many of his kills in Freddy vs. Jason are attributable to Freddy via mind control. Even the lower-end figure lands Jason miles ahead of Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, or Leatherface. Thanks for watching! Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which Friday the 13th film is your favorite.